Hi, it's Deborah Peters and welcome back to the Deborah Peters Show. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's topic is all about how to handle loneliness as an entrepreneur. There's so much conversation going on right now just around loneliness in general. I think with all of the technology that we have, there's more tendency to spend time on our devices and less with other people. So it seems like loneliness is at an all time high. It used to be really just something I think that seniors had to deal with. And, and now it seems to be prevalent in pretty much every generation in our society. Um, also, you know, at, at the time of the holidays, loneliness can be a major challenge for a lot of people. And I, I'm going to do a video on that as well. But today's topic is really about how to deal with loneliness as an entrepreneur. You know that old saying, it's lonely at the top. There's a lot of truth to that. And it's not about being an elitist. It's just about, you know, who can I actually share what I'm experiencing because of my position it's like a a burden of position you know it's we put ourselves in these roles of leadership entrepreneurship where we're creating these amazing dreams of ours in the world and we have people depending on us for their salaries and their mortgage payments and their families livelihoods and so who do you talk about your challenges with especially as a coach especially as a coach i can't even begin to tell you that as a coach having your peers around you and the same goes for being the ceo or the leader of your company or the leader of your team you know there's this fear of uh, being seen as being weak and perhaps uh, not being worthy of your role. So, you know, one of the things I know you've heard me say over time is do not share your goals and the things that you're working on with other people that cannot contribute because there's nothing worse than having the most amazing goal, the most amazing dream, just like, blown up because you shared it with the wrong person and they brought in all of their fears and all of their doubt and and maybe just even brought in their lack of bandwidth on possibility because they've never done anything like that in their own lives or been willing to undertake that kind of risk or that kind of growth and commitment and discipline self-discipline oh my gosh the amount of self-discipline that's required to stick to it regardless of what the circumstances look like so it kind of sounds like i'm contradicting myself here because now i'm saying okay so you can't share you can't talk to people about it um and then you end up feeling like you're isolated and you're alone so i wonder if this is you are you feeling in your burden of position are you feeling isolated? Are you feeling alone? Like you're the only one that understands exactly what it is that you're going through. Because if that's the case, I have some tips and some tools for you. So number one, straight out of the chute, I, I want to just come back around to this idea of not sharing your goals and your, your processes with people that cannot contribute be your own counsel now this is the number one rule in self mastery when we go inside and we learn to be our own counsel and we get our guidance from a higher level and y'all know what i'm talking about then we actually are able to move ourselves beyond our own resistance points because everything that's going on in your world it may seem like it's the other person it may seem like it's circumstances out of your control but it's really not it's really a projection 
of your own consciousness that's getting played out. And those people in those scenarios and those situations are just wonderful volunteers in your magical script of your life to show you what it is that you're focused on instead of being focused on your goal instead of being focused on your gifts and your growth you're actually worried or focused on your shortcomings or what you don't have or what went wrong in the past i mean i can't even tell you if i had a nickel for every time i had a client that said to me well it went wrong in the past so now we're cautious or now we're not going to move forward or now we're not going to now we're risk adverse i would i'd be a trillionaire you know because that's really what drives most people so if you're going to be your own counsel and you can't talk about it to people then what are you supposed to do i mean there you are this like isolated entrepreneur that feels like you don't have a support system and so herein lies the most important tool and you, you hear me talk about this all the time and I can't emphasize it enough and that is to meditate. Meditate, meditate, meditate. So in one of my last videos and I'll put the link in here for you. And by the way, thank you so much for tuning in and subscribing and sharing and liking. I would love your comments because then I can develop content that would best serve you. So anything you need some assistance with, just stick it in the comments. If I have some experience or, or resources in that area, I will definitely bring it to the table. So the big key element here in keeping your own counsel is to meditate. And so carving out a morning routine that makes the difference, meditate, journal, read something positive, say your affirmations and your mantras out loud when you're looking in the mirror, put a smile on your face and tell yourself how amazing you are. Become your number one biggest fan. You know, the problem with most people is in the feeling of loneliness, they're actually looking for some kind of external fuel or validation or love from someone outside of them to make themselves feel good. And you know, this is the biggest thing. This is the turning point that I had years ago. And that is most people can't even show up for themselves, much less pump you up, much less boost you up and make you feel like you're the king or the or the queen you are the only one that can do it for you and so stop relying on other people to bring that to you because they can't do it for themselves how could they possibly do it for you i mean it's a very small fraction of society that is completely self-reliant i don't I, I wouldn't even know how to measure that, but I would say it's probably less than 0.001% of the population is completely self-reliant. Most people, because we're social animals, we need to have other people around us. And to the degree that you're not really in tune with yourself, the more you need to have that external validation. You know, I, I've had clients in the past that have been running major organizations, publicly traded companies, and they have made the mistake of sharing some of their deepest fears, even some of their most superficial fears with people in their organization that could not contribute to the solution of that problem or that thought process or that choke point. And what ends up happening is they lose respect. Think about it. Most people are great followers. Most people are looking for leadership. It's why people look to their company to take care of them. It's why people look to their government to take care of them. It's why people look to society to take care of them. They don't know how to fuel themselves. 
And so I've had clients that are running massive corporations and they've made the mistake of confiding in people within their organization that could not contribute to the solution and ended up losing the respect of those people. So it's really important that you choose wisely who to confide in. So I say err on the side of caution and confide in your higher self. And that comes from having that morning routine where you truly connect to you and you truly align with your power, with your greatness, with your gifts, with your vision, with your drive, with your desire to, to create something magnificent for your life. And when you tune into that, then and only then will you be able to identify the one or two people on this planet that can truly align with that vision that you hold for you and contribute to what it is that you are seeking to create. So yes, there is a sense, I suppose, of loneliness at the top, but there's something else around that that I want to, to share with you, and that is this idea of loneliness. It has been the basis for most marriages, and I believe, I did 10 years of couples coaching, I believe it's what contributes to, in a large degree, to the divorce rate. When people are only partially self-aware, meaning they're still insecure, they're still unsure of themselves, they still don't know how to fill their own cup emotionally, they get into relationships and they look to the other person, thinking the other person's going to save them, fulfill them, or in the famous line from the Jerry Maguire movie, complete them, and nothing could be further from the truth. So getting into alignment with you, getting to know yourself, building that amazing relationship with yourself, and then get into relationship with someone else, and you have something con to contribute from a place of wholeness. Now, that's not static because you're gonna constantly be growing. So it's really important. You know, when you set up on this mission to be a leader, you have made a commitment, you have a responsibility to yourself to continue to develop yourself and stop looking outside of yourself for the answers. I've been, I've been working with a client recently that is uh, semi working for an organization. And I say semi because he doesn't have a signed contract, even though he's a W-2, he's, um, he's still not able to get the agreements on the table that he's looking for because he doesn't know how to own his power. And in the not knowing how to own his power, he's still looking to them to give him permission to be amazing, to give him permission to be outstanding, to be okay. And he, the guy stands on his head performing for the owners of this organization. So it's always, it always comes back to the relationship that you have with yourself. Now, a couple of other tips that I have for you is exercise. I can't tell you enough. Exercise is as much about your mental, emotional state of mind as it is about your body. Because chemically, it changes how the brain fires. And so I don't care what you do. It doesn't have to be in a gym. Just get out there every other day at the very least, every day if you possibly can, and do about 30 to 45 minutes of vigorous exercise. And just, you know, dig deep. Like, actually discover what you're made of when you think you can't do any more, and you can do one more, <coughs> pardon me, there you go. 
you're off and running and you have a new sense of power that comes from within that is undeniable and nobody can take away from you. The other thing is to network. And I don't mean the typical, you know, if you get this vision of showing up at these networking events where it's like a zoo and everybody's clamoring to stuff their card in your face and sell you something. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about networking with people that are at your level and beyond, <laughs> you know, always mentor up. Always get out there and meet with people that have accomplished more than you, that have a little less or a lot less fear, that, that hold back a lot less. Like get around people that are going for it, that are constantly moving forward. And this is a really important element because we become like our environment. So if you're hanging around with people that you're constantly having to prop up, then of course you're going to be lonely because there's no one at your level that can relate to how you think or what you're creating or how fearless you are or how much you're going for it. So these are really good steps that I think if we even took one of them and put it into play, that you would have some really significant results that would show up for you. So thank you so much again for tuning into my channel. I am just really enjoying doing these and I have pages and pages and pages of topics that I can't wait to record. And I would love to hear from you. What is it that you would like? What is it that you're working on? and that you would love to have some kind of insight on, and we'll do some content around that. So you have a blessed day, go out there and crush it, stay confident, and just know that you can start over any minute. So at any time during the day, if you're bumping up against a brick wall, go take a walk, get some fresh air, and then you can hit that meditation button for 10 minutes. I mean, what's 10 minutes? If you can hit the reset button in 10 minutes, boom, you just made the rest of your day supercharged. So thank you again for tuning in, liking, sharing, and subscribing. This is Deborah Peters, and this is The Deborah Peters Show.